Well, we're going to have a look at some functional equations in this session. And what I mean by functional equations is, just as the name denotes, they are equations, but the terms in those equations are functions in function notation. Let me explain. Here's a question here. We see that we have a function where it's g of x is x squared. And we have to show that g of u plus v plus g of u minus v is equal to 2 times g of u plus g of v. Well, how confusing for you and me. However, don't lose your cool. Just realise that that show that statement, the, the show that g of u plus v, etc., where you see in the line above g of x is x squared. That's the code. So if that x in the line below has been replaced by u plus v, it just means that you replace everywhere you see an x in the line above with a u plus v. So g of x equals x squared becomes g u plus v, which is u plus v, it's all squared, if you know what I mean. Oh dear. Isn't it complicated? Let's just show you in a visual format. g of x is x squared, right? Now, therefore, our left-hand side becomes g of u plus v plus g of u minus v. And that's going to be equal to, as I said, u plus v all squared plus u minus v all squared. As I said, you're just kind of replacing the normal x behind the g in the brackets with a u plus v. That's all you do, okay? And if you can just get that concept right, you won't have any trouble with this stuff at all. So now we expand those expressions out. Um, quadratic expansion, that's what we get. There's a little bit of cancel rooney And what are we left with? That's exactly what we're left with, okay? They're simplified and factorised. Now, I think you'll find that that's exactly what the right-hand side of this, uh, this expression up here, basically, is. Okay, let's see if we get that. Yeah, the right-hand side, yeah, 2 times, well, g of u is u squared, and g of v is v squared. So, that is the right-hand side, 2 times all that, comes to exactly what we got in the previous calculation of the left-hand side. So therefore, the left-hand side equals right-hand side, which is what we were required to prove. And that's pretty nifty, isn't it? So it was very easy. Um, I've done that in longhand, in case that was a technology-free exam. However, if you were allowed to use your calculator, this would be very simple indeed. Now, this calculator screen dump here is a CAS calculator, exactly the same one as you're using, except it's an iPad app of the CAS calculator, which I'm using. So this, the, the keypad looks a little bit different, but the operating system injected into it is exactly the same. So don't be confused by that. Just look at this, what's on the screen. Okay, so you can see that I have typed in uh, x squared as f1 of x, okay, and I got it done, so everything's good, and then I typed in that equation that we were meant to prove, as if it was true, just like that, and I got a true, so I'm very happy, that was a two-line job on the calculator, okay, so, very good, let's move on, alright, we've got some more of this stuff now, now we've got a different function for f of x now, looks like f of x is e to the x, plus e to the minus x, and we've got another one, g of x, where g of x is e to the x minus e to the minus x. So what have we got to show? Well, we've got to show each of those three things in turn. Let's have a go at the first one, shall we? All right, now, let's see. Well, f of x all squared. Okay, I think we can handle that. Just do the left-hand side and prove that it equals the right-hand side. So the left-hand side is that thing. Let's multiply it out as a quadratic expansion. Mmm, beautiful. Look at that middle term. Isn't that interesting? Can you see what that's going to become? Yeah, think about that. Think about that. 
Okay, here we go. <laughs> well, yes, what did I do there? I've got the first term, then I've got the third term as written next, and then the that middle bit I've written last, because look what that dissolves to. See, e to the x minus x is e to the naught, and e to the naught is 1. Of course it is. So what I was doing, basically I was sort of lining up the terms so that they looked like that, which is exactly, exactly, I think you'll find, uh, what the right-hand side of that uh, expression we had to show that was. Let's see. Yeah, the right-hand side is f of 2x, which is e to the 2x plus e to the minus 2x plus 2. So we have shown what we had to show. Mighty fine, eh? Mighty fine. Now, let's do it if in case it was not a technology-free exam, we'll just do it on the calculator, and it's super, super easy. Here we go. Now, you'll see I've done it there for you. So the first line, I just typed in the expression as f1 of x and stored it, and I got it done, so the calculator's happy. Then I stored in g1, of, I'll call it g1 of x, as uh, the same thing with, except with a minus sign in the middle, and I got it done. And then I actually typed in the expression they wanted us to prove as if it was true. And yes, the calculator says, yep, yeah, we'll pay that, it's true. So it's easy, isn't it? It's really, really easy on the calculator. That's why they won't give you those on the calculator. Or they might give you them as, as multiple choice expressions. But see, that that's just, um, you have to demonstrate that you can basically do a multiple choice question in 1 minute and 40 seconds, and you've really got to be good at the calculator. So and know what to do as well. Okay, next one. All right, same functions for f of x and g of x. We have to show that f of x times g of x equals g of 2x. You see what I mean by functional equations? They are equations with functions in them. So that's what the whole thing is. Once you sort of um, overcome your initial terror of looking at the ridiculous things, you can easily sort them out and force them to lay down their arms and submit to your authority. So here comes number two. Now, the left-hand side, that's how we do it. We'll, we'll see what that comes to, and then we'll prove that that equals the right-hand side, and then we're done. All right, so here it comes. f of x times g of x, yes. Oh, look what I've just spotted. Look, do you know what that is? That's a difference of what? Yes, it's difference of two squares. See, something plus something in one bracket and something minus the same something in the second bracket is always a difference of two squares. So I don't even have to bother trying to do a quadratic expansion. It's just the first term squared minus the second term squared. Jolly good. And that's what it comes to. Now, does that look like... I'm just looking up the expression we had to show in the question. Oh, yes, it does look suspiciously like g of 2x, doesn't it? The right-hand side is that, which is exactly what we just got for the left-hand side. Oh, boy, I'm feeling all fuzzy and warm inside because we've got it right. Yeah, that's right. So, so the left-hand side is the right-hand side, and it's a very happy ending. So let's do the calculated version now, which is equally exciting and very easy. Okay, that last line, we see I've got the same functions programmed in as f of x, f1 of x, and f and g1 of x. So I've just put in the expression that they asked us to prove. There it is. And the calculator says, yep, I'll go, I'll pay that. It's true. So there you go, you got your true. So it's looking good. And I think we've got one more to do, don't we? Yeah, okay. So we've got to show that f of x squared minus g of x squared equals 4. Well, let's go for the left-hand side. There it is. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, let's just sub our functions in there. Oh, I'm trying to be a smart aleck. Look at that. <laughs> I'm turning that into a... Um, it is... Uh, yeah, it is a difference of two squares, isn't it? So I'm basically factorising the difference of two squares. Look at that. Hoping it'll come out nice and easy, which I bet it does. Um, yes, there's f of x minus g of x, and there's the second bracket, f of x 
plus GVXs. And I, the reason I did that is I was going to get some nice cancelling. Look at that. Okay, let's do. Let's clean that up a bit. And I've removed the internal bracket from the first term, and which reveals some more lovely cancelling. Look at that. And now we can clean up again. And, oh, how interesting. Look at that. See, that's going to become 2 times 2, which is 4. Now, guess what e to the minus x times e to the x equals? Can you guess? Yes, it's e to the x minus x, and x minus x is 0, and e to the 0 is 1. So it just becomes 4. Yeah, and that's what we had to show it was. You see the question there above, num number 3? We had to prove it equal 4. So that's the right-hand side. So we did it. How easy is it? Now, um, we'll just do the calculator version now. Here comes another screen, and there it is. And I've just put it in, that last line. There it is. I put it in as if it was true, and it, yes, it confirmed that it was true. So it's beautiful, isn't it? Okay, now here's one last one to finish off this thing. Right, so what have we got here? Good heavens. f of x equals e to the 2x for all real x's. We have to prove... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. What does it say? If then... Mm, then f of x all squared equals f of y, where y is equal to... Mm, looks like we've got to solve this for y or something, I think. Look, if it looks confusing, just make a start. Just make a start, and you don't know where you're going to end up. You'll end up somewhere, <laughs> but hopefully it'll be somewhere in the right direction. So let's just go with this. f of x is e to the 2x. True? Because that's what they told us, yep. Yeah? Now let's square the thing and see where we get. Righto, I'll, go, I'll buy that. Now that comes to e to the... 2 times 2x, doesn't it? Equal e to the 4x, right? Now, have another look at the question. We've got f of x all squared. And they're telling us that that equals f of y. Well, but according to the definition of the question, if f of x equals e to the 2x, then f of y should be, yes, e to the 2y, shouldn't it? That's right. Now, they're saying those things are equal, so why don't we equate them as equal and see where that takes us? Hmm, I think I can smell a good outcome here. Right, let's just plug in the numbers now, guys. Yes, now, I think this is going to be easy. See, look, the, the exponents have to be equal if those things are equal, so... Therefore, we're saying 2y equals 4x, and therefore, what is y? Yes. Now, is that there somewhere in one of those options? Yes, it's number A. Aha, we got it, didn't we? Now, you see, if you just have the confidence to put one step in one foot in front of the other and take a step, it'll help you, and you'll basically, even if you're unsure of yourself, you're likely to just sort of stumble on and get the right solution and be very, very pleased with yourself. Now, I'm going to show you the calculated version of this, of how you solve this. It's rather elegant, okay? Watch this. Now, you see what I've done there. In the first line, I defined e to the 2x as f1 of x, right? And I got it done. So the calculator's so far so good. And then what, I, what did I do then? In the next line, I said solve for f1 of x all squared equals f1 of y, which is what they said, and I'm solving it for y. That's what that little comma y means. And y is going to come out the other end as 2x. There it is. Hey, I'm pretty excited about that, aren't you? I think it's marvellous. Aren't these CAS calculators something else? Um, I think that's the end, of the, end, the end of the line. So I think I'm going to let you go home now and have a nice cup of tea. And you're a star. You certainly are a star. So, functional equations, roll over, we've conquered you, okay? Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.